Hey, before you start the podcast episode, I just want to lay out a couple terms and conditions that you're going to have to follow in order to watch this show. The first one is go ahead and follow so you never miss another episode of the podcast ever again. The second one is share this episode with a friend who might find value in what I said or what a guest spoke about. And the third one is go ahead, if you haven't already, write a review for the podcast. It's one of the only ways that this podcast gets shown to other people and we get to grow the show organically. And without further ado, let's get you into the next episode of Not Another Podcast. I hope you enjoy. We gotta go right in for the video. I know, we <laughs> video we- <laughs> We were immediately we, just podcast just straight mode. straight into video. No, 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 no. I'm talking about, like, like talking about video instead of dance first. Oh, we just need to, like, yeah, go straight into video. That's, like, all we can talk about. <laughs> okay, are we doing intro and stuff? <laughs> I also have to remember that. This is an intro. Not only do and I. So, we, are we going to have this? It's fantastic. Hello? We should have, we should have him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to be joining us today as well. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is my podcast. That probably peaked the volume when I did that, but it's okay because we're going to keep going. This is Evan. He's a so, dude. Um, he's weird? also... A dude, and we're gonna be here talking about um, some video, some photo, some business, some dance, and probably some sneaker talk, as well as oh, um, comparing sizes <laughs> of lenses. Of of <laughs> lenses. I, even right uh, now, <laughs> my camera is a lot smaller. <laughs> if you could see the other Listen, side of this, you know what they say, though. I'm kidding. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> his lens is pretty big. Is that the 24 to 70? Yep, that's All the 24 right. to 70. Yours is a nifty 50, which means nifty it's about 50. a quarter of the size, which is and price. historically accurate. And price. And Actually, I think it's even cheaper than that. But fifty is like a hundred and isn't it like a hundred? No, it's like two fifty. Two fifty, really? Yeah, yeah. So that one? Yeah, yeah. Because it's still good, like clearly. Oh, I, well, the ones that <laughs> I've gotten see this off-hand. footage. You know what I'm yeah, yeah, we're seeing it right now. Yeah. Off-hand. No, and um, like the old Canon ones, the EF lenses are like really, really cheap. Really. The nifties on the Canon EF. I think the Nikon fifties are like one hundred and fifty bucks or like yeah. one hundred and seventy. That makes sense. And then you can buy them offhand for like nothing. Yeah, like, and then give like me a yeah. dime. and then you have the the fifty f one two or f one fours that are like. Oh my god! Bucks. Yeah, there's yeah. You go down a half or a point four of an aperture. One of the guys from Ash was actually oh, um, stop of an aperture. I just said of an aperture. Continue. <laughs> one of the guys from Ash was actually using the one two fifty or no eighty five one two. Yeah. I was like. I was talking with a friend of mine in Naples, yeah, and I was sitting there, and I thought she was using a Nifty 50 1.8, and we were sitting there, and I grabbed her camera, and I was like, this looks a little bit different. She's like, I don't, because she's like, it doesn't make sense what you're talking about, about them being so cheap, because I'm pretty sure mine was a little bit different. I looked, yeah. and she was using an F1.4, and I was like, yeah, <gasps> yeah they go died. up so much <laughs> when Bro, you go, like, F1 to Even F1 just to go 4. down from, like, 2.8 to, like, 2.4, or 2 on yeah, like or a lens F2, like that, yeah, you yeah. even, like, oh, my God. Yeah, it's a big difference, Bro. but it's a big difference. It's a <laughs> massive. Yeah, it's a massive difference. Well, you get so much cinema. It's incredible. Oh, on like we definitely just went off on a yeah on a, on a tangent. <laughs> and, you know fine. that's how it goes. Um, so, have, you know we try to keep. I'm trying to keep it structured. You know, I you know there is no. <laughs> have you seen my brain? It's not structured. Max. It's my my brain is a skyscraper waiting to fall, but for some reason it hasn't yet. It hasn't fallen that's, yet. It's. It fallen I yet. think it's just in a constant fall. It's just and like it's I'm, just I'm the leaning tower. It will eventually <laughs> at some point. Not be okay. I mean, I'm not okay now, but like, (laughs) all right, we get along. So, (laughs) um, I I don't know. I feel like first we should probably because it's what we're talking about. Get into like video business, kind of like even though I know your entire story, Mm -hmm. I feel like, and you know mine, Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm still gonna ask questions and Mm -hmm. you're still gonna answer because that's Mm -hmm. what you're here for. Yeah, right. It's what I'm paying you to do. Are we doing stories? We're gonna like start with stories. Yeah, I want to start with some background. background. So first and foremost, like not staying specific to video. Just mm-hmm. in general, mm-hmm. who are you? Mm-hmm. What is your name? Because I forgot. Mm-hmm. And um, what do you what do you do currently? All right. Where all right, are you going? Right. A little, Give us a little slate, as we Ooh, call it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So my name is I'm a Evan. Performer too, Evan you idiot. That's what I'm saying. I know that we're doing a little <laughs> slate. We my call name is it. Evan Jordan. Um, 19 years old, young entrepreneur, single dancer, single. <laughs> 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 all right, so it's gonna be. A, I'm gonna be oh, an wait, asshole. It's okay. I was it, like, okay, it's we're not talking, a massive difference, like just like a little bit of difference. But okay, yeah. I'm just, I, I'm just, just, I don't know. Somehow it just keeps turning. To this the entire side. podcast is gonna be you talking to me being an asshole. So okay. just. <laughs> all right, dude. Whatever. Um, Continue, you know, basically my life story, I guess, is you know, I I I was born in New York, Long Island, Bellport. Shout out New York. Moved here when I was a kid. Here being Florida. Um, been here for. Up in, from pff, six years old, um, up until now, so quite a while. Floridian at, at this point, 
um, literally at the beach yesterday, so <laughs> I can't get any more Florida than that. Got some solid red tide in. Yeah. <laughs> if you notice, I actually don't usually sound like this. I'm a little nasally. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> Not going to lie. Kind of annoying. <laughs> Not going to lie. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> but we're working with it. Um, right now, um, I'm kind of like a up-and-coming professional dancer, still working on that. Um, I do videos for a living, videos and photos um, for a living. You mainly shoot bodybuilders, but I do... All the things around mm-hmm. the sun, literally just anything that, you yeah. know, will pay. Saturn, pretty much Jupiter, Venus. Exactly. And the sun. Next uh, galaxy over as well oh, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I like, jump galaxies. Occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> just, just hit the light speed button. Just go like, what are we doing today? Also, if you guys uh, didn't know, it is um, AC's off today. And it's perfect for audio, though, I'm not going to lie. It's going to be perfect for audio, like, but, like, the problem is that one is, like, straight on your face. Yeah. Every sweat I'm droplet and sweat stain is going to be seen from that camera Only right a little there. sweat droplets. I can see you have Oh, some. I'm done. Oh, yeah. I, well, you know me. I sweat, like, crazy. Yeah. I, we like, also I spend a bunch of time setting this up. So. I breathe and exist. <laughs> sweat. And then I sweat. <laughs> like they, I don't have to be doing anything. I could be like living in Alaska. Like I could be a permanent like Alaskan resident. Walk outside, <laughs> still it's sweat. Not, it's not possible. Have you seen some of those videos on TikTok where it's mm. the lady in Alaska? Not Alaska. The South North Pole. South Pole. South North Pole. It's like <laughs> negative 120 degrees. No, I didn't see the girl. Negative. I saw the guy. He walked outside and he was like, "This is <laughs> negative." <laughs> <laughs> he's like this is what it feels like outside this is what it looks like to be out here he's yeah. like it's really lonely there's only a few of us yeah but like, and it's we're always out dark there, and it's like always a little bit dark and he's like i can't stay out here for much longer otherwise i will get frostbite out literally. on my entire body and literally. i was like please go back inside literally i was like please go back inside. i know it's like that anticipation that gets you but literally like so i'm waiting I, for I, him to like not like, it, make it back inside. Just, like, collapse, and that's the end of the video. It made it on my For You page. The The first video was the fact that the sun was going away for, like, the rest of the year. So, like, the cycles of the sun, it's not up and down, like, every day. It's, like, every, like, six months. They so, get, like, the six cycle, months, yeah. at, like, for six months, <laughs> it's just nighttime. Always. Oh. So, so, there's no sun. There's no nothing. Fantastic. And it's just freezing. Always. Yep. It's crazy. Like, and, like, people, like, work down there. I'm like... First of all, what do you do? I don't know how Santa does it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Sorry. Why would you say that? <laughs> because it's yeah. impressive, bro. No, okay, I know it really. So no I, just noticed, I just noticed there was a monitor over there. There's a monitor over there? Ooh, Sorry, nice. ADD. So, do you, do you, yeah. Do you, <laughs> do you, <laughs> literally just completely distracted you, you okay, by a bro? monitor so, that was Are you sitting in the market here. for market? Are you in the market oh, for I, I just I just bought a new monitor. No way. Yeah. How's that? Is it I color used, accurate? Oh, I haven't. Oh, I got an Asus Pro Art. <gasps> 4K. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Wait, so, like, the bro, color so those accuracy are the ones is that like... You can, those are the ones that... Can't you, like, actually adjust the color on those? You can... They come calibrated. If that's what you mean. Well, yeah, but like every room using like different light bulbs and different settings and reflecting different light looks different. So mm-hmm. just like you kind of have to recalibrate it to whatever room you're in. The mm-hmm. only reason I ask that is because of the cheap ass one that I got. Mm-hmm. Not calibrated. You can't calibrate it. You can't? I don't think this so. This one you, uh, yeah, this one you definitely can. But it how. comes, what is it, Coleman certified or something like that. I don't but know. it's, I, I just looked it up, Um, like some of the best. You looked it up on Google. Yeah, Google and YouTube, Potato Jet. <laughs> I, you know, just the, the little, get everything. The little Asian guy. Learn everything you know, he from t- that guy. He did a full, full Every- breakdown, and he just tacky. like he liked the pro art, um, just because. I mean, it's the only one that's like says pro art at the same time. Whoa, the name. But like, like at everything. the, you know, like f- so, I'm, like you I'm, can probably you. go for it. You know, yeah, like it's yeah. probably gonna work if it says pro art in the name. So did I was that, like, did that cost a little bit? Yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> sure, yeah. sure did. Yeah, because I got the 27 inch. Because I wanted a big one. Oh my god! Yeah, you got the same size as me. Yeah. Is, this, is that what you have? I have a 27. Is it big? Yeah, it's, it's like nice. massive. Like me. yeah, because I wanted to be able. Because like the one I have now, I think it's like a 22 or 24. It's tiny. I think yeah. it's a 22. Uh, because I know that yours is smaller than mine. Small. And then my laptop's a f- uh, 15 and a half. So I've been working. Small. I've been doing a lot of mobile work mm-hmm. on on the. Uh, I think that's a. 15 or 16 you said i think you said 15 i think it's a 15 so it's probably around the same it's honestly as mine it's so it's not bad it's not bad but for mobile. it's significantly difficult to transition to doing that 
when you're used to working yeah. on, a, a, on, on a house-sized monitor. That's I agree. But, like, that's why I wanted to get speaking. it. That's why I wanted to get it because, like, to have all the tabs open. Oh, and then yeah, also, yeah. One, of the, one of the key things that he actually mentioned is also not only is it 4K, but what happens is if it's big enough, the image in the corner while you're editing is full 1080. So you'll be able to see a, a 1080 video in full 1080 when you have the timeline and the and all nice. the FX and stuff nice. like that open. So I was like, ooh, like that's kind of like a neat. Like, you know what I'm kind thing. of ashamed that I only very very recently figured out hmm. is that when you're editing in Premiere Pro, the timeline. So like I always had lag issues when I would record like big like you know the the playback gets a little. I yeah. just like literally just recently learned. That that's not gonna it won't come in. No, I'm just the, just recently learned that when you hit enter, it renders it for playback. Oh yeah, I remember. I so he just me learned that. Just I was like, what the hell? When he figured that out, and I'm like, literally have been doing that forever. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally what I do all the time. Because when I'm doing titles and stuff, especially like oh my god, titles. Those you, you guys, if, if you guys are watching and you do video, you you know like the title, especially honestly, the ones in Premiere that you edit in Premiere in the graphics are section. <laughs> It, it rips your GPU apart. <laughs> <laughs> so I always have to have to little do a little GPU highlight and hit vacation. enter. Hmm? Get some red tide while it's there. I said your yeah. GPU takes a beach vacation. Oh, yeah. Get some red tide while it's there. At the time of recording this podcast in 2021, there is a currently a red tide in the ocean that I went into yesterday. <laughs> yeah. The water was warm, dude. It was just... Ew. You always... Oh, that's gross. It was gross. In, there Florida, was a lot of people. in Florida, you want cold water. Just slightly, you know? No, but I, as I you like went cold, out, like there was cold. like... There's like waves of chilled water but most of it was just warm but mostly I think, it was honestly just pee. yeah it was there was a lot of people there <laughs> a ton of people so many people. but like that's why i wasn't super worried about the red tide because i'm like if there's a bunch of people in there then i'm like okay you're like, not alone at least. not <laughs> i won't be the only one who's <laughs> definitely <laughs> sick morbidly sick if you die at least you're going down with about other people. yeah literally i mean it was it was fully packed yesterday, i'm an asshole but, that's okay so good all right so Video wise, um, at what point? Since that's the subject that we're on right now, you uh, you dance, you you done the video, you do the photos and stuff like that. That's what you currently do uh, full time. Well, not full full time, but like it's the only thing that we do, so we consider it full time. That's kind of what we do. Oh, it's full time. It's it's yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, right now it is definitely. Uh, if it's something you do every day, I'm pretty sure it's full time. I'm pretty sure. Mm, yeah. Um. And <laughs> no. When you when you work at 9:30 at night uh, every day. Every day. See, I've been getting up hella early, so I like. And I still work until late, though. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, like, don't, early. It don't matter if I wake up early or not. I'm still working until I've been nighttime. Getting up between like six and eight. That's disgusting. Every <laughs> I mean, I've been I actually been getting up around eight, of uh, fixing my schedule. Okay, good. Fixing good, good, good. my schedule, cause See, it's I just like one last night was up at like five thirty. There's water all over <laughs> your eyes for some reason. It's because I'm crying. Why? <laughs> <laughs> from laughing. You You're actually sweating. You're actually sweating from your eyes. That's I know. Not Guys, so it's hot in here. I can't this wait till I wait. So I can't hot. wait till Max gets here. He is gonna be like, "What is happening?" <laughs> yeah, because we're already gonna have <laughs> been in here for a while. Oh jeez. Um. All right. So, at what point did you find? Like, how long ago did you find video? Um. I know you started when you kind of like were like, I kind of want to like vlog. Like mm -hmm. that was like your start, wasn't it? You wanted to do like vlogs and stuff like that. Like when you, like when you started. started well, I don't even know stuff. if you know this. So like when I. Started, started. Well, you started like when you were young, young. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, like phone in the bathroom or at the dining table. So I had a YouTube channel. Those videos channel. are still in his channel, by oh, the way. Oh, yes. Yeah, I have a YouTube channel. It's so old at this point. I have um, I did videos. How old is it? Probably like 12, 10, like yeah. way back. And I would just film like video star, like dance videos. And I do yep. like random videos on my iPhone 4S, like that, you know, <laughs> like iPhone 4S. That's where it, like, kind of started, just, like, a video, like, want. Like, I always just, like, being on camera or just making videos in general. And then I kind of lost it for a while. And I just, like, did, like, dance and stuff. Um, and so... Because you were full-time taking classes for, like, a minute. Like, that's oh, when you kind of disappeared off the radar between, yes. like, our good friend group. Yes. Like, I never heard from you again yes. for, like, a while. Yeah. And then you just kind of, like, popped back Well, because that was also, like, the family issue time. So, like, I had... Okay. We had... So, I was just dancing... And then trying to go through school, and then like we were having like all the family issues, like moving and like all kinds of stuff. So like in that time, like I was just off the radar, just like gone. Yeah, yeah. And then and then we started coming back. We moved to one of the other houses, probably when I was like fourteen, maybe fourteen, fifteen. And at that point, maybe even before that, my Lucas had gotten a, like a, one of those like 
little cameras, like the tiny baby ones. And like all of a sudden, like I just like picked it up and I was like, I just want to film you. Like, let's just film. Because he had created a channel that he did some like videos on with his friend of like scootering and like just like outside stuff. Yeah. And so I did like terrible montages of him scootering. Terrible. And I I don't know if you guys know. I I remember I saw one of them. Pinnacle. I used to use Pinnacle. It's this old, old software that is just horrendous. (laughs) It's just terrible. Well, that's what I used because I ended up getting it from f- for free. And so I used that to make, like, terrible videos. But I made them. And, like, that's when I, like, started, started. Yeah. And then when I kept, like, doing that, I, like, low-key was like, oh, like, this is kind of fun. And then I got up to enough money to be able to purchase a camera, which at that point, I had bought the Lumix G7. Lumix and I was, G7. like, freaking out because it cost $400. We were freaking out at that point, And now we're like, no, nah, 400 yeah, like not like, because we have a lot of money, but no, because everything in our lives costs little. upwards of that. Literally, like, <laughs> <laughs> like I spend that in a day. Like, <laughs> I swear, sometimes not because I, we want to. No, not because we want, because <laughs> I have to. It's like compared to like the lens I just bought, bro. It's a freaking thousand dollars just for the lens, man. Uh, like y'all so know. Much. Hashtag anyway, sixty so twenty four seventy two eight. I remember eight. because you were <laughs> <laughs> so such a nice lens. You were talking to me about it. I remember you were like, "Dude, I'm about to get a lens. Like, I'm about to get a camera." Oh like, yeah. I'm about to get a camera. Mm. You were like hyping it up and. I was like mm. so hyped for you because I had never really like done anything. And Video. I was like, He's getting a camera. I was like, that's so dope. Yeah. You were like four hundred. I remember my mouth dropped. I, I was like, like <gasps> yeah. I was well, because like four hundred dollars. Like, yeah, because at that point I was just working for my stepdad, and like it was just money that I was just like hodling. <laughs> like I just kept like bringing in money and like saving it, and so I think I had like a thousand in my account like total. <laughs> And so, like, for... Taking away half of that? I mean, pretty much almost half of it, just to, like, drop on a camera. Like, it sucked, but, like, that's, you know, kind of, like, where it started. Was I there when it got delivered? Yes! I was there when it got delivered. Oh, my gosh. I was at this house hanging out. We were playing, like, some game or something. We lost our minds when it got delivered. And you we got... We heard that knock on that door. Oh yeah. Oh, we went and ham. We went. I had we no idea. Up. You how were to like, use "Don't it. touch it. Don't hold I it." Know. You were like, <laughs> you, were, "You were like, you were so protective." I of was that very thing. protective of it because I like, I just, it was just so expensive to me. And yeah. Then, like so, it was like, it wasn't new. It was All I wanted used, was, was to like hold brand. it. <laughs> I know. Uh, all I wanted was to hold. And we it. didn't have a lot of time. I don't remember. I remember that day because we were in the garage I and I shot like random crap. And I had, he to, had leave. to leave. Yeah. Like. I, we were time crunched. I probably had like an hour after it got there. We if that. I left like immediately after. Yeah. I, think I had something that night. Or and so I, I took that and I just like made like horrible <laughs> little like videos and like took a couple photos like just trying to like learn how to do it. And then I did, I used that for like the homeschool graduation yes. videos. I did two of those. The reason I saw the video was because, the video, the ones you made before you got the Lumix, like the one you did on like the point and shoot. Mm. Um, I saw that video because it's the video that you sent to Miss Sandy. Yeah. Yeah. So as a as a piece as a of reel, demo. as a reel, as a demo reel. The worst. And she if, she sent me and she was like, this is good. And I was like, yeah. No, it's we're, we're not. Like, like looking back on it, I'm like, Wow. Dude, That's if wild. somebody sent me the video that I sent her, I would have removed you from my life. <laughs> That's how bad that video was. Just to be a just to be a dick to you. Next time you send me footage of one of your clients, I'm gonna send you back something like that. Do it, bro. Oh, something like <laughs> something straight off. <awful. laughs> so, bro. But so the thing what? is, you couldn't even like recreate that because like the quality was bad. Everything was bad. It was just bad. Oh, it was just don't, all don't bad. Don't challenge me. Shitty as you <laughs> just, want. I can all the sliders in the worst direction possible. That's that's how that's gonna go. Blacks all the way down. Whites <laughs> all the way up. Tone curve, not S. You. You. <laughs> Speaking of. We're shooting tomorrow. I actually thought about doing a crazy color grade for it. You like should. something wild. Crazier than when you turned all of the trees purple? Oh, yeah. Okay. Bet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I've you put... Fry I've, every frame. Not even fried. I've pushed the curves in the wrong direction one time, and it was like, wait a minute. Well, we were <laughs> like, I can't use it for client videos, clearly. Like, But like I low-key like, I saw that, and I was like, oh, shit. Well, yeah, you and I were on call that one time when <laughs> I, I fried an image, this. and I was like, wait a minute, this looks badass. It looks really like, cool. It was like super um, dope. I actually have that photo saved on my phone now, because I'm like, I need to keep this for reference. Which so one? I remember. The one of the trampoline where he's like winding up through the dodgeball, and I like fried the picture. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah. kind of dope. It, anyway. For yeah, it's fun no reason. We well, should do it. Sick color grade. Yeah, I'm gonna do a ridiculous color grade somehow. Amazing. Yeah, for sure. So you got your start in video. You started doing those little videos. Then that camera came along. Really, what made, started like the first paid ones was the home circle ones. Like yeah. I, I went to the home circle graduation. You got Dude. that camera. You did the home circle graduation. Stupid. You know, I never saw that video. Good. 
<laughs> Can you show me, please? Not I, now. I gotta figure like, out where later. it's at. It might be my old computer. Oh, They're all my. Have that? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can get rid of it. It was the first computer I ever bought. Cause that was one of the other things. I was. I'm like. I've always been like a tech nerd. Like I don't mm-hmm. know why. Like I've always loved like electronics and things like that. So I have an old computer that I, I like love built. Them. I don't know anything about them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I. Always, so I have an old computer. Um. It's not even like old. It's still like it'll still run games. It's just yeah. Not up to anyway, date at all. <laughs> yeah, so you made that video. Um, you then you started. You continued to practice with the G seven. Got mm-hmm. a little bit better at it. I outgrew it, man. And I um, it. eventually, you started making like more vlogs and stuff like that. Recording. Mm-hmm. You still had the G seven all yeah. the way up until last. I vlogged year. with that thing for you yeah. Vlogged I, that thing for like two years. Mm-hmm. I you know I used I I definitely got my yeah. And honestly, like the video quality that I camera. ended up getting wasn't bad at all. Well, it's a fantastic starter camera. Oh, so good. Mid grade video. So good. Yeah. Like as long as you don't have low light. Or as yeah. long as it's not low light, yeah, that camera pretty much does okay. Yeah, and to be honest, like I don't know if you've seen like this is random, but like David, even David Dobrik's vlogs, like they're not good quality, no, no, no. like at they're all. <laughs> like he, then he, my he, camera he, that was four hundred dollars. The content it's is the content. better. The yeah. content is better than yeah. his production quality. Yeah, but and I think, I think he does it on purpose. Yeah, I think there's a certain aspect to that because have you ever seen like a Logan Paul vlog? Mm-hmm. Even those aren't like incredible. I mean, no the parts of them are. There yeah, are montage it's aspects the editing, of it where yeah. he brings in a videographer, or whatever, where mm-hmm. they're great. But the stuff that he and his like core group of friends vlog, yeah, it's is not super honestly awesome. not incredible. Yeah, like and a lot of these, bro, a lot of these big YouTubers have been going to iPhones, man. They literally will like they'll have a it's camera. It's easier. It's yeah. it's more convenient. I still struggle with it, but like yeah, it's the audio. It's the audio, and as soon kills as you me, turn bro. the camera on, you know it's an iPhone. Yep. That's, like, one of the things that just kills me. Like, I hate that I know that as, like, as soon as it comes up, like, I know it's an iPhone. Like, I hate that. I I, I hate it, but at the same time, I'm kind of happy I do, because I can be like, okay, this was clearly, like... Oh. An iPhone shot. But it does suck sometimes. Yeah. I'm like, I just want to enjoy this, but I can't get over the fact yeah. that they filmed it on an iPhone. Mm-hmm. I have tea for you, because yesterday I did a shoot with it. Anyway. Um, you did I a phone? Huh, I didn't. Oh. I didn't. Oh, okay. Did. Anyway, um, so you kept on doing those vlogs, mm-hmm. and then at one point did you start, like, deciding... Did you decide or did you get offered? Because you did that first paid job with the G7. You did the you did the graduation ceremony. The two um, of those. So that was, like, two years of that. Yeah, two of those. Mm-hmm. Um, did you think that you wanted to do, like, paid jobs and stuff outside of those, or was that just, like, something that came along that was an opportunity? Um, it was something that came along that was an opportunity, but it kind of, like, started, like, my brain just, like, thinking about... Um, like ways that I can use this right. for my own good. Sure. Um, so like, and like we talk about this, but by no means are we me. I, I mean, I won't speak for him, but <laughs> no means are we like insanely famous videographers, photographers. No, but we make our way. I mean, I so I am. that's the only reason we can say like we were here, but then like now we're here. Right. Like we like we suck, suck. Like. We did. We, like, bad, we bad. I don't know, but I, I haven't I seen a lot of your old stuff. I can... Well, you, do you remember that coffee... Sucks. The coffee montage that I made? Like, the little coffee brewing montage that, that wasn't I posted? That bad. I mean, it was... That was the first thing I really ever did, video-wise. It's pretty good. Really? Yeah. I had watched a shit ton of yeah. uh, Daniel Shepard. Yeah. We, that's, so much. Well, that's where I... See the color... Bro, that's the where warmth? my style came from. Daniel. Oh, absolutely. Oh, 100%. Which we could talk about, too. We can also talk about that. Inspiration was the next thing. It was one of the things I was going to go to in this conversation. But, um... So you it got your brain going mm-hmm. thinking about the things that you could do mm-hmm. uh, in the paid universe of things. Mm-hmm. What other paid gigs did you do? Because I am going to get to the fitness and stuff because I know you work with a lot of bodybuilders and mm-hmm. uh, fitness influencers. Yep. But outside of that, what were some of the other paid jobs that you had opportunities to do, or did you really just jump straight into the fitness stuff? Um, so we went at it? the there was a couple ones that I did. Dude, I don't even. Okay, so uh, there was there was a couple things, terrible projects that I did with. Uh, I guess uh, it doesn't even have to be paid. My dad like, at and the time, stepdad. You and I were doing a lot of free work as well. Yeah. Um, I remember that project. Bad. That was hell. Bad. For you. What the? Oh yeah, the one with my dad was terrible. I honestly, know the video that. ended up being all right. It, it was just not bad. It was just though. terrible. Was it was yeah. It was it was really hard to work um, work with him. Uh, but then there was another one that I did because my stepdad at the time had, had done a lot of real estate stuff. And so he took me out. One th- that was the other thing. that oh, I got you on the real estate stuff. So originally. So okay. I would go with my actual dad sometimes. And we did a couple videos for the houses. Like videos for us. And then I did. Um, 
Sorry, hold on. You're good. What's you got like two minutes for the camera. So oh, reset. All right, all right. So yeah, so we were at um like a an old folks community back over in Spring Hill, and I did like a montage of like the community basically. And dude, I used so much warp stabilizer. Oh. The quality oh was so like everything was so contrasted and sharp. Remember when we thought warp it was just warp stabilizer. Remember when we thought that was like good? We were it, like, just it, throw a warp stabilizer on it. It'll be it's, fine. No, it, it's it, it needs to be used in <laughs> moderation and only if you absolutely have to. Yep. And it's because I was using the fly cam, the cheap one. I I bought like a fifty dollar oh my god stabilized I fly like, cam. I've got a stabilizer and I was like Evan, this no. thing doesn't function. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> I, it it didn't work. Like it just like made my like camera like move like. Like it was on a boat. All it gave you was leverage. Yeah. Other than that, it was. Honestly, could have done better. Like I literally shot like yesterday's car me like handheld. Like I honestly would have done better yeah. than that stupid little thing. Ended yeah. up selling it for the same price. So. <laughs> Lucked out. Yeah. But I made terrible videos with it. So that was like some of the first stuff technically before moving well, you on tried to, to use, you tried Freddy. to use that. Um, you tried to use that Steadicam for the deluxe shoot. You yes, so we, and then we shoot, shot Deluxe, video, and yeah, then I yeah. also did uh, Barber. The first one with the Barber was the G7. So I did that Barber oh, shop. Gonna do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do the barber so I did the Barber shop, and that was like the first. That one was really cool because like that you was after. We went in there together. Yes. Yeah, we went door to door. That was that was so much fun though. You and oh, I, we went like door was. to door. Like that was the only person though that we actually. I you know, actually but like, landed off of that. I didn't land them at all. Yeah, I I, you were like, we, but like nobody I, really <laughs> landed. We we that what that was the only person. I guess it's an like okay ratio. Well, ten like one out of ten. What? Well, we hit more. People. Than, we hit more than ten. We had wait, but that was just in one day. We had done like two or three True. days of this. Now I actually just had a conversation with a guy this morning about it, um, talking about that. The fact that like even though we didn't book any shoots, I still learned a lot from that experience. Like going out, True. And learning. How to talk to people, how not to talk to people, True. learning about how they think and what their needs are. And yeah. Like, I don't feel like I would be as far along in like the way that I speak to businesses and to influencers and uh -huh. people had I not spoken to 25 of them. Well, yeah. And it, and it always like just continues to get better. Like at, oh, like the more like business I do with people, like not only does it get easier, well, but like it, gets, it gets better. I'm just saying that was like a real good Kickstarter. Like it yeah. really got us along. Yeah, because it was, I mean, it's terrifying. You literally just walk up to some random person with literally no credibility. <laughs> Zero. Zero we credibility. We had nothing. We had no. Is that when I had my G7? It was. It was when I had my G7. Your G7. I you only... had just gotten, like, your Zune. So yep. you were, we were going we were along like, that yes. line. You were like, yes. So we had, we wanted to look. It was so funny. We actually sat and talked about this. We were like, we want to look as professional as possible. So we wore the biggest backpacks we had. Biggest backpacks. We wore, we had, we stuffed them to the brim so mm -hmm. that they were nice and thick. Mm -hmm. We put the both of our gimbals on the sides of them. So we we're both carrying our gimbals with us. Uh huh. Totally unnecessarily. Oh, yeah. We, we literally would carry as much equipment inside as we did. And I think, uh, didn't, did we walk inside with a tripod on one of them or no? Did you have a tripod on the side of yours? Uh, no, I think you did, no. though. Did I? Yeah. I don't think I had my gimbal with me. I think I had the yeah. tripod. Yeah. That's you didn't even did. have a gimbal, so you're like, all right, I'm just going to put my tripod on the side. <laughs> so Speaking of, I still, I'm still going to buy a Ronin soon. <laughs> you are? A yeah. Ronin 2? No. The new one? That's too, exp it's too expensive. Ronin, I That's like $500-something dollars. But yeah, I don't want to spend. It's too much. It's it, a lot. But it is a really nice it's gimbal. Mm. Yeah, the but yeah, just the Ronin, the Ronin S first Ronin version. S. Well, it'll, it'll work great for you. Yeah? Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Um, anyway, else? so we got to start with, we went door to door with those mm -hmm. shops. You got the barber shop. You nailed them. You did their video. 50 bucks. 50 bucks. In the pocket, in the bank, started our careers. 50 bucks. 50 bucks. That's what started it. 50 yeah. bucks. That's what started it. <laughs> Even still, like, dude, every time I talk to the Nutri Shop guys, they're like, "You're not charging enough, bro." I'm like, "Do you want to pay three hundred dollars for the video?" <laughs> <laughs> but like, as a that, as a business, like, I'm literally like constantly negotiating a hundred bucks, dude. Like, a hundred bucks is is decent for a video, oh, amazing. but people still negotiate it as if it was like a crazy amount of money. Like, people do, I, like it's unfortunate, but some people just don't understand the value of like what we do. And how long we've taken to put into it. I yeah. mean, we've taken hundreds of hours of our time mm -hmm. to learn our equipment, mm -hmm. learn the concepts behind it, mm -hmm. learn different styles of videography, like everything yep. that goes into the oh, behind the scenes. Oh, we have to get into that, Daniel. All the of the time behind, yes, 
all of the time that we learn, not only with the equipment, not only with filming, but with learning how to do post production because yeah. great well, filming yeah, it's a is whole shit without post, yeah. without good post. Yeah, it's a whole nother. I mean, it's like two different, completely different not, jobs. Not to justify fixing it in post. I'm only saying there's a quality behind. Well, yeah, it just it, they go hand in hand, but they're two completely different things. To oh, be a, to be a, like a DP, a cameraman, like whatever you want to call it, like you to be a cameraman is like its own job. To be an editor is its own job. To be a colorist, whatever Literally, you call there it, are people is a color, with color engineer, degrees, audio engineers. Technically, it's all a job, and we technically do it all, all by ourselves. All so to, so to get a video for a hundred and fifty, a hundred, yeah. seventy five, two hundred dollars. Consider the fact that we've put hundreds of hours learning about it. How to do, like, five different jobs. And on that single project, we're putting in... Hours. 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 But also Luckily. consider the fact that, like, we can also get in and out and then also film and post in, like, less than four or five. Oh, my gosh, bro. Some of, like, some of these recent ones... Let me see. I took an hour to shoot this last guy. Like an hour. Shout out Louie, by the way. His, his video came out fire. Oh, yeah? Nice. Yep, came out um, maybe an hour left. And then edited the next day. Took me two hours, two, three hours. Damn. That's like, Considering what we're doing, it's like 25 bucks an hour. It's like not more. Bad, not bad at all. Yeah. More. 26. Yeah. It's yeah. fun. It's, fun it's not bad. Get, it's fun when you get efficient at your job. But the other, the other side to that is it's not $25 Every hour. No, no. <laughs> it's it's whatever it equivalents to by the end of a project. That exactly. Is revisions and all. Exactly. That is. Um, I've yes. been doing. I'm. I'm working on. Not working on. I've been thinking about the some of the stuff that I want to be writing on a contract because I really need to get that done. And and you need to do now contracts. now I'm gonna send everybody an invoice and a breakdown of what. Yeah. So people you, can kind of understand. Have you heard what of you're charging. Uh no, I think God. you told. Yeah, you told me about it. I literally I use this free website that's called Invoice Home, and I can show you. They look Invoice Home? What is that? It's like a free website that I can just make invoices on. They look professional. You can also do it on PayPal, but PayPal gave mm. me some issues. Like, yeah. It was a little bit buggy, and it didn't quite work quite right. Yeah. And I don't know. PayPal just throws me right off sometimes either. just because, like, some of the fees they charge, and it's a little bit too complicated. Oh, literally, annoying. I just type in, like, three things. I type in the description, who it's for, the date, the price, and I just download it and send it as a PDF. Like, it's perfect. Damn. It's right. so good. Send I'll it as a PDF? Yeah. How does that work? Can they pay the invoice through PDF? No. I just send the the invoice separately. Oh, and then you're not actually invoicing them to pay on the invoice. You're in, you're giving them just I'm doing a separate invoice, and then I'll invoice them on whatever payment app that they decide. <laughs> oh. Because everything's okay. payment apps now. <laughs> right. Cash app, Venmo, well, with <laughs> Zelle. Honey, with HoneyBook, it makes it really, really easy because I can like create the contract, mm -hmm. and I can create the invoice, mm -hmm. and then I can send it to an email, mm -hmm. and it creates like a form that they can click pay now and they can pay it right there in their email. Oh. Or it takes them to the page. We're getting into the <laughs> We're I'm so definitely I definitely need is, that. We'll, no, we'll I talk definitely about need that. that. Later cuz it's definitely useful. Um, yeah, it is. And it's like it's it's the service is $10 a month and it comes with a lot of other things oh, like just invoicing. Cheap. For the first $10,000 of revenue that you make. That's only $10,000 that comes through HoneyBook if you're using them. So if you take an occasional payment, not through your invoicing system or whatever. Or How much is it after $10,000? 40 bucks a month. Okay. It's not bad. But if you're making... Well, if you're making that <laughs> much, right, exactly. <laughs> if you've made no. that much, $40 a month. That's And they know that too. Right, like, exactly. Yeah, we'll give it to you in you know, your startup, but once you start making that bread, you're going to pay us. You're going to pay us that bread, right, exactly. Once we start doing more transactional stuff. But, but going on to... Um, yeah, so After when I, I did only one workout video with my G7, one, and it was, it wasn't bad. I did like mm -hmm. cool effects just to make it more interesting and like a little bit better quality. But that, that, that wasn't even when I like adapted that style. It was yeah. the shoot after and that and I had bought my Sony in between then because the first time I shot was last year and I think in October and, um, <laughs> hashtag Deluxe Media one year anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Deluxe Media. Um, that was like um, when I when I did that shoot in October. There was a huge gap when I wasn't doing any videos because that was the only person again fifty bucks. That was the only person. Freddie was the only person that I had like clientele wise. And then he finally brought me back in later on to do another one, and that was the first one that I had shot on the Sony, like the first actual Fun. like job again. 50 bucks <laughs> but we we're, hustling. We're, we're still up there yeah we're still hustling and that was when i started to adapt the style that as known today as 
Honestly, I should figure out a patent because out- people literally try to emulate it and they can't do it. I've watched some I of my even, clients I try and do it. that. I would just start call like I would give the style a name and uh-huh. start referencing it in your content. Right. So that like people can start calling it. So it's not the deluxe uh, the deluxe deluxe style. But like you're you're gonna have other It's gotta have a name, so yeah, it's gotta cool have like a specific name. name. Yeah. I don't know, but like so that people can start referencing like, you know, like like you and I, we're like a Daniel Schiffer style video. So that we can be like a deluxe mm. style video, but like Deluxe Whenever. style videos actually kind of it's got a good ring. Oh yeah, but like, you're gonna do video. more than just fitness videos and stuff, so you can't. So just a deluxe videos. style video. Either way, it, anyway. basically what happened was I had I had watched Daniel Schiffer, and if you're watching this, you probably know who that is. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the people who are wa- watching this, I don't know when you're gonna post this or where <laughs> or uh, three years or so. Possibly. Three years, yeah. even cool. This is like logging memories, you know. Oh, like this kinda. is incredible. That's why I actually started journaling. I didn't even tell you that sometimes. Really? Sometimes I journal. And it's literally just from a couple of days ago. It's fun to look back where your brain was. And so, yeah. like, stuff like this. Even if you post in three years, like, that's kind of lit. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, we started, we're definitely going to have follow-ups. Like, this is not going to be a one-time thing. Like, we're oh, gonna, crap. We're going to do more and more. What? Oh, yeah. But I'm talking, we did Herbert Sherbert was another. Oh, my God. Those photos were That so was bad. the video that I, I that I had showed everybody as a, because honestly, that video was pretty freaking good. At like, the time, it was amazing. It, like, even still, like, it's obviously, it's not a Sony and it's not my current skill set. But, like, at the time, that video yep. was fire. Yeah. <laughs> that yep. video was so good. <laughs> um. And to this day, honestly, I still love that video. And, like, that's Bro. when we started experiment. Excuse me. experimenting with, like, flat color profiles and color editing. Color oh, my grading God. And, when, you and, just, um, when you showed me about flat color profiles, my, my mind was mind blown. Uh, I told you about that it literally has no effect on pictures. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. It literally just adjusts the gamma a little bit, but it actually yeah. messes with it. So, you like, it'll, it'll yeah. look, like, super weird it in post if, it's, if you shoot flat. And then bring it into post because it's raw and it'll like look super weird. So I always have to switch off my pro- picture profile to like yep. shoot photos. Yeah. Random note that just came to my brain. Yeah. But How we watched the Daniel Schaefer videos and that's when we went into the Herbert video. We shot for Herbert Sherbert. Shout out Kevin. Kevin <laughs> Shout out Kevin Esprit. Esprit. What's up, guys? <laughs> What's up, guys? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> that is when we so we watched a ton of Daniel Schiffer and that's when he was kind of so like because like he's kind of like DL right now he we were, made like all the food videos yeah. and we're like this is perfect because he they do like the Sherber so they needed like some food content so. yeah so we were like <gasps> and honestly amazing. we emulated some of those moves kind of clean, kinda man. clean. We did like the swipes across the table. If anybody's seen the, the iconic Coca Cola commercial Coca-Cola. with the three cans, yeah. uh, with the center one being pushed towards the camera yep. and the two being pulled to the side, we recreated that with ice cream. Anyway, it yeah, was ice cream cans and hands. <laughs> All you see is hands on top of it. <laughs> yep, it was hilarious. It was not strings, it was hands. Just straight up <laughs> authentic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we don't have a budget. No, no <laughs> budget. <laughs> and by that, there is none. Yeah, um, pretty much. So we we had literally like dissected and like tried to watch as much as possible, and we took literally sending links back and forth all yeah, the time, constantly. And so like once we adapted that, that is when like the start of, like all the transitions, like like even before oh the TikTok transitions were like popping, I hate we started it. to adapt I like it. those kind of. Transitions. We were doing that before TikTok was a thing. Low key, low key, high key, high key. Yeah, before like all the <laughs> <laughs> stupid <laughs> or the. Clock. Oh yeah, that's the stupid hoodie. The hoodie. The hoodie. Honestly, I really I love that. that. I, that's a really. I cool want to do it. Can we do that? We do should do that tomorrow. Sure. It's a really I cool trip. Anyway. Um. <laughs> and so no. basically, that was like the birth of insert whatever we call wanna, the style here. I want to. I want to know how did you get Freddie as a client? He was my neighbor. <laughs> Swear. Okay. No, literally, so one time, <laughs> he was parked in our parking spot. Hashtag Freddy. Shout out Freddy. He was parked in our parking spot in twice. the... Hashtag Freddy. Freddy. Oh, I said that the first time? Yeah, so now it's, that's three I times. said shout out Freddy. That's Yo, four. shout out Freddy, man. That's Freddy five. and Coco. <laughs> so they got a new baby. Anyway. <laughs> Start counting. Freddy counter. So. How many times I can say Freddy? 
<laughs> he was parked in the wrong spot. So we had to knock on his door and ask him to move because he was in the wrong spot because he had just moved there. And then after that, we realized, because we had seen him at the gym because he was a trainer, we had realized, we're like, oh, my God, like, it's he's such, oh, buff guy next door. Like, he's a trainer. How cool. Like, I want to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> so we started talking a little bit, and he was. I told him I did videos, and, like, that's just kind of how it birthed. Yeah. Right there. That's, that's awesome. how I locked him in, and then we started, and we and we got the video done, and then we started to, like, adapt it. But the the style didn't come in until, like, um, the first, after yeah. the first one. The second one is when, like, we started the style, and then it's just, it's like to this day still developing yeah. every time i do a shoot there's new tricks and new moves that i do with the camera that i'm yeah. just like it's I'm new learning, like it just keeps happening i'm learning every time i go into a shoot now too, literally and i'm only you know a quarter a of where in. you're at like i'm only a couple in and like it's that like, that new one like cause honestly like some of these moves like i would always replicate like so, the one where i pull out and it's like i zoom in or zoom out and yes. i like transition yes. it is such so a, i did it by accident one time and i was like yo, yo. Oh, yes. oh sorry peeking yo yeah. <laughs> like so and it was now. yeah it was so cool and i Bro, to this day i still do that move he sent me that he immediately sent me that video and mm -hmm. was like dude yeah what did i just do and yeah. i'm like and like that i magical. i bet you that's how daniel's style came up like he just started, oh, I bet like, he actually trying, like, discovered a shit ton oh yeah he just kept discovering Dude. like random stuff um so the style that we're referencing for anybody listening is basically just like lots of camera movement sometimes camera. every time it switches clips it's a transition in between like yep. uh, a camera transition so a very harsh camera movement mm -hmm. at the beginning and end of each clip mm -hmm. to make a natural in-camera transition and between clip different together. clips and it literally like most of the time doesn't even need like a crossfade it just naturally oh, works oh literally never does and I would, once i figured that out it was just yeah. super sweet like you don't have to add like transitions in between you just clip and you just got to find the right point of like where it's like smoothest and yeah. some of them <laughs> will come out looking like whoa like yeah. that you like some you literally do don't like, even notice that it was like a transition it's yeah, just you know camera blur how many clients do you have currently Ish. <sighs> dude <Okay. laughs> i don't mean it like let's that go, let's, go, <laughs> let's go let's go along this route how did you like accumulate each of those clients? Is it just, were you right place, right time? Did Word you of reach mouth. out to people? Word of mouth. Word of mouth. Word so of mouth. that's one of the reasons one of the biggest reasons that I've stayed in the in the fitness industry, fitness niche, is just literally because like people just like kept hitting me up. <laughs> like <laughs> once once so it started with Freddie, then it went to Max, who's gonna be on soon. It went to right after him is when and then Sean, one of the other guys. Mm -hmm. Um, it went right after those three people is when as they started like posting all the videos, tagging me. And then all of a sudden people just started like hit me up and they're like, yo, like I actually want a video too. And, and from there, it's just, a trickle, it's just a trickle effect. And, um, I keep getting like new people cause like they'll see them, forget about them, see them again. They're like, oh, I want to do this. And then you see them again. They're like, okay, I want to do a shoot next week. Yeah. So <laughs> next week. Yeah. So. You, you always get those last minute people, um, always. Too, that are like. Within the week. No, always. I always. had the guy next day. He texted me that night. It was like probably 7, 8. He's like, hey, bro, I know it's last mid, but can you come in tomorrow? I'm like, my schedule is clear. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, bad. Yeah. No, it always feels good when you can be there for someone like oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. so good. Because it was cool because there was a show in Orlando, uh, oh, NBC, man. like That's Nationals right, or something out. like that. No, he didn't, bring, he didn't bring me out. He just wanted to do it before his show. Oh, and he was like, okay, can okay. you just have it by Monday? I'm like, yeah, I can well, do it by Monday, but I got to bring yeah. it in one day, with one people, day return. With people seeing... Um, with people seeing the videos, the same concept that you're talking about as far as like people seeing it, and then they see it again, and then they see it again. It's the same marketing concept as like you have to get in front of your key customer seven times before they actually yep. buy something from you. Yep. And in this case, it's them seeing constantly mm -hmm. the videos mm -hmm. from all of these different trainers mm -hmm. in the same exact style, mm -hmm. and they're like, wow, this one guy is really popping off. And yep. You know, everywhere. It's just repetition. Like after so many times, it's just like, okay, like, because like I'm the only person who does this. Literally, literally the Quite only. Literally, like, there's some people. There's like probably here. like four people in California that like do similar stuff, but they don't even do it to the extent that I do it. But as far as like Tampa Bay goes, nobody, nobody does, this. does this. He's he's the only one that's I'm, like starting to do I it. I learned from him. But yeah, exactly. Now like, I want you to be a hundred and ten percent transparent and clear here. How am I following along in your footsteps with that style? I told you your videos are good. Yeah, I try. It's just they, you know, obviously it's gonna adapt and get better. You just started, yeah. and they're like, but like at the same time, they're not even bad. <laughs> I try. And they're just different. Like, like every time I watch his videos of like 
I don't want to call it my style, but like my style. What's your style? Every time I watch like his, like some of the decisions you make, I just wouldn't make, but that's just because I would make different decisions. But at the same time, stylistically, it's different. So it's kind of a good thing in a, in a, in a weird way that he's like making it like his own um, or you're making it your own. Right. Um, so, uh, right. But like every time I would do watch your videos, I, I'm like every time a different shot comes on, I'm like, I would have done it differently <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or I would have edited it differently. Sure. But at the same time, but like, it's not bad. It's good. They're good videos. They exist. They, <laughs> they, they, exist. they are there. But other than literally us two, man, there's like one other videographer that I know about that doesn't even do nearly what I do. And yeah. it's just, it's crazy, man. It's freaking wild. Unless, unless, Unless they just don't post about it and nobody sees it, but as far as uh, most of Florida, I have never seen some some of the videos that get produced from literally like four gyms total, <laughs> yeah, and like a couple people, like, yeah. And that's what like once it like I I haven't even thought about this, but I'm thinking about it now. Like once it like catches on, like it could go like pretty big. Like it honestly could. Like if somebody like sees it who's famous or like somebody who has influence or like just a bunch of people start seeing like this content do like any of your current influencers i'm sorry to cut you off do no, any sorry. of these current influencers that you're that you're working for do they ever post on tiktok or just instagram they have tried tried sometimes <laughs> not really <laughs> Bro, but I think Freddie has a couple. TikTok John is Max. where you're going to get that virality, mm-hmm. and where like, do you post them on TikTok? Uh, I've posted a, a like a 3D photo. I have posted just a random photo. No, 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 your workout videos. No, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Idiot. I, it honestly, like, uh, you're thing. right. It's probably it's, it's probably where it's gonna pop off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, after we're done with this, I'm gonna post one of those videos on TikTok. Literally, literally, like, post, like, how many, I mean, how many do you have that are Way vertical too many. Way in too many. Your, like, stash. Just Freddie alone, I have, like, 16. You've done that many for him? Yes. Jesus Christ. Max, his video, I have, like, 17 of his. Bro, and then everybody. You I, have enough to feed, like, you could literally do, like, one every other day. Yes. And feed it for a while. Yes. Mix that in with some of the other random ass content that you make yes. and put on your page. Bro. I know. I have a ton. I have a what ton are you of videos. Doing in life, bro. Dude, I have so many videos. I I have to. I have half of them are on another hard drive because there's just so many. I bro, I had to offload them. That's wild. <sighs> yeah. Man, that's crazy. So <laughs> dance. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't know how much of like a goal setter you are, or like you know looking into the future We're and seeing about like this. where you are. I I know. So. This is, why, this is why I want this is why I want to ask this question because I want to see if I can get anything out of you. Where do you see Deluxe Media going between all of your other aspirations, which we will also get into here in a moment? Where do you kind of want Deluxe Media to go? Where do you think it will go? And how do you think you're gonna get there? What do you see? So as right we now? know right now, like and I understand am... that it's uh, subject to change. Yeah, of course. Always. I am and that's one of the reasons why I do what I do, though. Like, the way, like, I mentally do it. Yep. I am a dancer. Like, <laughs> like I had no intention. doesn't intent. dance? I <laughs> had no intention of being any sort of videographer. I just liked videos. I liked taking videos. I bought the camera, the G7, because I wanted to film myself and my experiences. That was the primary purpose of, like, these cameras that we have now. Right. But all, it just happened so naturally that I just went with the flow. And, like, mm-hmm. that's how I believe that a lot of things should go. There's obviously some sort of structure that has to be had. Like I know that I have what I have now and I have and I need to grow it. I need to outsource. I need to, you know, do these things. I have like this small plan, but at the same time, you never know what's gonna happen. Like it's all it's it can be all random at sometimes. Yep. So like as far as like where the business will go, you never know. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I want it to become like Deluxe Media, co- Deluxe Media Co. Like Deluxe Media Company. Like that's what it is. It's gonna be um, a media content company. It's gonna be videography and photography, and it's just, at some point, it's just gonna be a full company. You know, under the Deluxe Media name, not mine, but obviously I'm gonna own it. But it's gonna be a you know a full company with employees who are just out, hopefully just ripping apart my style. You know, like that, <laughs> like that for be better so for better. Yeah, like just doing it. So like ten years, like from now. I have, like, 15 people just shooting all over the country, you know, stuff like that. Like, That'd be dope. Yeah, and they're just, like, literally just destroying my style. Just, like, get it, like, so good. So like, good. Um, hire, like, 10 of the best videographers out yeah. there. But you're trying to Train everybody to, like, just do the way yeah. I do it. Maybe. Yeah, no, that's probably, that's probably, honestly, and then just have that, like, sustain. You can honestly probably start, you should honestly probably. Because video's not going anywhere. 
it's not going anywhere. No. Video content, no, uh, advertisements, video taking, on the con- social media. On the contrary, video is taking over. That's why I, that's one audio, of the reasons. That's, that's why I'm here doing yeah. this. <laughs> it's because video and audio is taking over. Photos Completely. tell stories not in the way that I need Instagram them to. just talked about how Instagram isn't for photos anymore. Not even a little bit. Nope. It's content. It's, it's literally content creation. Mm-hmm. That can be photos, infographics, videos, audio. Yep. Literally, Short animation. Form. Short form, animation. Short form, long yep. form. Yep. With IGTV. Uh, IGTV. Now. Yeah. IGTV. The reels, short form. Uh, yep. They're, they're I just still kind of get pissed off that IG reels is 30 seconds. I actually kind of hate that. Because mm-hmm. it fits around with my entire thing. Because I, all of my videos are between minute. 45 seconds to 60 seconds for mm-hmm. TikTok. Yeah. And I can't repurpose a single one of them mm. for IG reels. Yeah. Which is super, super, it, yeah. super annoying. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I actually don't But like at the that. same time, it just keeps that short form. You only got yeah. 30 seconds. Make it count. I am pissed that TikTok started allowing three-minute videos because that makes it way oh, harder yeah. for me to just start scrolling through TikTok because I sit there and I see that the video is like three minutes long, but mm. it starts off really good, and I'm like, I really don't want to sit here for three minutes to consume a single piece of content. Well, yeah. Sometimes I do, though. If it's oh, good, I do. If it's oh, good, I do. I'll watch it. I'm just it. like, I don't know if I for want sure. to. I'm like, I'd rather go to watch YouTube it. for this. <laughs> I'd rather s- watch somebody's YouTube short because that's what YouTube shorts is for. Mm-hmm. It's between oh, yeah, that just 60 seconds dinner, right? to like three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't even looked at that yet. Dude, the viral capabilities of that are weird. It's like not, but it is. Once again, it's so strange. Another TikTok. Social media. Anyway, Social well, yeah, TikTok did a genius thing. Yeah. Anyway, and now everybody's copying. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Well, they have to. I mean, they yeah. Got to go with you the flow. When, did you notice how stories became a massive thing when Instagram said, "Hey." They took it from Snapchat. Oh, Snapchat had that first. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Yeah, because Snapchat was because Snapchat adapted the short forms as well, Snapchat. so they have the highlight. So Snapchat had the stories, yep. and then Instagram was like, okay, let's make some stories. And then Facebook took it, obviously. Then LinkedIn same. took it. You know Did LinkedIn they? has stories? No way, man. Yeah, LinkedIn has stories. And then YouTube took it. YouTube Twitter started has, making stories. Twitter has stories. Twitter. Th- that's, that's, Again? That's, We've been yeah. sitting here for an hour almost? <laughs> almost. Holy so, I just crap. Get the, I just want to get the last even, point. It's, it's we wild. haven't even touched yeah. on dance yet. I know. It's wild. It's going to be great. Holy um, crap. So... I wanted to touch on this last thing. What, what, what was I about to say? Oh, um, you know the, you know Clubhouse, uh, the audio chat room mm-hmm. app that came out? I have it. Crazy. You have it? Okay. I have it as well. And I really, really enjoy using it. But Twitter came out with a feature that is Clubhouse, but on Twitter. Ooh. It's literally, I, I forget what it's called, um, but it's like something room or something. Not, I want to say waiting room. It's not waiting room, but it's... Um, so that's a good name. It's it's a feature <laughs> because that was one thing that a lot of people were worried about is like, is Clubhouse a platform or a feature? The concept Ooh. of Clubhouse is it, a, and that's and that's one thing. But Ooh, anyway, good point. Um, oh, hey, no, homo. Hey, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> we just <laughs> touched hands behind the couch. <laughs> don't worry about that. Um, don't worry. So yeah, okay, that's that's wild. So you started wanting to just make videos and record yourself. Then you ended up getting a little bit more serious about that, recording By yourself, accident. bought the camera. Then, you know, because you were doing that, people caught attention and wanted you to do budget projects. You did the budget projects, mm-hmm. came in, did that, was like, well, this is kind of dope. Went, started talking to people, did some videos, did more 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 videos. Kept doing videos, continued to do videos. <laughs> and now you're here and you don't Sitting have a life outside of video. Pretty much. Yep. That's all now, I do. I know you also but it's dab- fun. Uh, for the last like two minutes, do you um I know you dabbled in photography as well. Do you do that like actively for people as well? Or is that more of like a side? So thing more than half the time do? I there's only been a f- sh- few short times that I've purely done a photo session of any sort. Sure. Whenever I do photos, I do it together. So, like, I'll be shooting a video. I'm like, they'll be like, yeah, can I get a photo too? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I charge what I gotcha. charge. And, like, that's that. But there's only been a few times that we've been here because we're in a studio right now. I've been here. We've done the, those photo shoots. There was a couple times that I've done outside of that. Um, like, we did one in the gym before Mm -hmm. just like a photo shoot like purely but other than that i definitely will always technically consider myself a videographer who does photography okay that's how i a lot of times will label myself and i just noticed that too even yesterday dude like i was like taking photos and i'm like all he wanted to do was take videos (laughs) of the cars like i wanted because like the photos are technically quicker but the videos are so much cooler they are because the the, obviously the quality that comes out of my camera is just did you make (laughs) yeah did you make any 3d pictures out of the out of the cars no that would have been a really cool idea yeah i didn't even think about it i was sweating my 
toots off. You know, my toot, my tootie off. You know, <laughs> tootie, tootie off. Dude, I was sweating my tootie Both off. Your tooties off. Literally, <laughs> literally, <laughs> so hot. So like, honestly, because like yeah. there was so much to get to that I wasn't rushing, but I was just so amped and like I was just like bouncing all over the place, photos, videos, wherever I saw, yeah. like whatever. Um, that I honestly didn't think about being super creative. Gotcha. I just like wanted to grab the videos. I did a couple cool shots, but I just wanted. Not get out. Well, I just want to get because like what stuff, happened was I, I grabbed the cameras and or cameras. I grabbed the camera, took all of it, went, did my did my laps around all the cars, and then went back to my car, put it away, and then like chilled. Enjoy and it just event. enjoyed the cars. That's yeah, good. right That's afterwards. Good. Yeah. All right, are we are we grabbing into dance now? We are gonna grab into dance now. So, dude. <laughs> so for no, as long again. as I'm sure Ever. you can remember, you've been moving your body. Dude, I mean, we all always. have, but like you've been moving your body with excessive force. Excessive. So force. you you did the video, you had some fun with that, but let's talk about your YouTube channel for a second, which is mostly vlogs or videos of dance. dance. So how long have you been dancing for exactly? All right, here's the dance story, cause oh like boy. we did life me, story, we some... did video story, yep. now we're doing dance. Let's story. Let's get the dance story. Background. So when I moved here from Long Island, long time ago, we. Like, I was, like, obviously, I'm sure you can tell now, high energy always. Like, so stimulated, you know, um, act, just an active kid. And we tried soccer. We tried flag football. Just never stuck for some reason. Like, I just, it, like, didn't stick with me. And so, all of a sudden, we, you know, we just walked up one time um, into an acro class. And ever since then, I, I stayed the entire year, did the recital, did all that. And I'm like, all right, like, I want to take more dance class. So I started, and then I did hip-hop and musical theater, random. Nice. But I did both of those, fell in love, and then I just dove right into all. Third year of dance, I was doing lyrical, contemporary, not contemporary, lyrical, tap, jazz, musical theater, hip-hop, acro, everything. Um, That's where, like, literally it all started. And I did that for... Dude, like seven years, like all those classes. I did that for like seven years, and that's where. I, and I did competitive team as well. Um, that was, I mean, that was a lot, but like that's where like, not the fu fundamentals, but like a lot of like my foundation of like dance of like, just like Check. loving it and like performing and stuff like that really came from. Yeah, so you spent a lot of time doing that, and now it's something that you're trying to make into like a lifestyle. Like yeah, so after those sorts. seven years, I I shifted studios just to kind of like level up like uh, my game like. Like, I leveled up um, dance-wise. And so I, I was at that uh, the new studio for four years, I think, up until pretty much last year. Um, and so, um, oh, no, first first blank. No, dang it. Uh, it's we okay. had such a good streak. Uh, such a good flow going. Oh, it's I didn't okay. want to keep it quiet. Yeah, um, it's okay. You went, you, you went along, and then you changed <laughs> studios. You were there for a little while. Four years, and that's when year. I – okay, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> That's when I really grew. Like in in that new studio, like it was different teachers, people who were in the industry. Like I was taking classes like crazy, conventions, competitions, going wild, buck wild. Four years of like aggressive training. It was, it was every terrible. day. I, I would do day. With you. I know I would do daytime classes. I was freaking shredded. I was like every just dancing day. Like we would be like, Yo, Evan, you want to hang out? He's like, I gotta go. Dance. I gotta go to dance. I gotta it go to dance. Always, <laughs> I have to go to dance. And I would dance um, a lot of times from like four in the afternoon to like ten at night every day. It Literally was every exhausting. Day. And like then I would try after events. I was homeschooled, stuff. by the way, so yeah, like that helped. I was too, so it helped. Ooh, yikes! Yeah, yikes! Bunch of homeschool <laughs> oh, nerds. God, <laughs> yeah. I'm left-handed too. What do I have to say? <laughs> <laughs> left-handed no. and homeschooled. So, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go. Oh man, I will um, say holding the mics is kind of fun. I love this. That's this not is way bad. better. Yeah, I love this. Stand, I, it's not as fun. It's not as fun. Because, like, I can just... You do realize how much noise I'm going to have to, like, fix with just that single sequence of, like... Sorry. Right? Eh, it shouldn't be too bad. Just a little. You, the people just listening to audio just... hate Wait. you. Nah, it's okay. So, you changed studios. You went for a while. And um, at what point during the seven years and then the four years between those two studios and any conventions and stuff that you went to, at what point were there any, like, click moments where you were like, this is my life? This is the rest of my life. I knew when I was young um, that I wanted to do it, not forever, but, like, as a career. Like, I knew I didn't want to go to college. I knew that I was just going to be a dancer. Obviously, I didn't know I was not just going to be a dancer, clearly. I knew yep. videography now. But I'm 
but it's just an it's just an add-on like the videography skill is just an add-on to what i do because as an entrepreneur like i feel like it just goes like with it like being a dancer like you know you technically work for yourself in a weird way you know you're your own brand you're yourself like you you have to like promote like yourself and that's just you and that's an entrepreneur in, in itself like as a dancer being a dancer but when i was young i was just like yeah this is what i want to do like it, i just love dancing so much and like and people do too it's just the difference is like I'm trained, so like I'm just like right. an average. Like if I didn't, I didn't, if I didn't dance, I think I would still just want to dance. I just wouldn't do it in the fashion that I'm doing it now, right? Like, like professionally good. and good, like and, tra- good. And, and trained and like all that. Because right. I did ballet like, classically. I'm like technically, technically classically trained, like what they say. But I'm definitely trained in ballet. Everything. That's you name awesome. It. So you always you you knew from like a younger age after doing it for a couple of years you were like yep this is yeah this I, just is liked, cool. I just like I just liked it. it I just liked it so much <coughs> and there was times obviously when like you're working so hard that you're like I actually don't want to do this anymore and I'm honestly tired of it but those are moments the more yeah those are moments and the more I got older the actually the more I wanted to do it like and as and right now the more I've been out of it like the more desire that I have to actually be a dancer yeah and I really want to do the bad and we're getting close by the way I didn't tell you about that. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, MS- the MSA got got back to me, and I was able to send my reel and Fantastic. headshots to an agent, so, so I can go finally be, do auditions. Dude, finally. Be I mean, unless if, if if they hire me, everyone was like, I don't see why not. But I could see we'll why see. not because <laughs> you never know. Like you never know. It just it just There's depends. Always a why not. Yeah. So you want to take that, make it into a career. What were some of the pathways that you wanted to find? There are, there are numerous different avenues of commercial dance there's cruise ships there's theme parks there's uh literal commercials so when everybody asks me this what do you feel you fit the best there's two questions here what do you feel you fit the best in and what do you think currently not all time but currently you enjoy the most out of all the different so uh, when everybody asks me this like where i want to go i literally want to do everything I want to be a background dancer. I want to be a cruise ship dancer. I want to be on Broadway. I want to be a Latin dancer. I want to be... You name it, and I probably want to do it. That's just my desire to be just like... I'm so diverse. Hashtag... Oh, that's why Deluxe is a thing, by the way, because Deluxe is just... (laughs) That looks scary. (laughs) Deluxe is just diversity and just having everything under your belt, and that's how I've always been. Just literally just like... When I go after something, I master it. Like, I try, like, my best to, like do it the best that I can and I think that's where part of you know success comes from and being, so being deluxe literally that's where it came from um and so when I do things like even if it's small like learning the guitar like I taught myself I learned I'm not like I can't like shred but I can play the guitar you know <laughs> like yep. just little things like that like every time I pick up something and put it in my hands or put it in my body I do it to my fullest and I and I and I try to like get really good at it it sure. makes it makes people mad <laughs> <laughs> it makes people mad <laughs> why because, like, they're like, oh, you're so good at everything. But I'm like, no. Just I just try really. Hours. Yeah, I just put way too many hours. <laughs> I into just it. cried for 10 hours straight, and it happened. No, I, 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 do, I do learn well, and I, I can pick up things. But I do, like, try really hard when I, when I do just random. It could be anything. Yeah. Literally anything. Um, but when it comes to that, like, um, I, I want to I wanna be in all aspects. And the type of dancer that I really am, like, right now or want to be is, like, I love commercial dance. But I love concert dance at the same time. Like, yeah. I love contemporary companies. They're some of my favorites. Modern companies. I love modern. Uh, but, like, uh, it goes, the, other, the commercial dance goes with, like, being in music videos and being a background dancer. And, like, that is something, like, that is close to my heart. Like, to be, because, like, one of my friends, she's actually from Tampa. She just was in a, well, she's a background dancer. Now, two people, actually, are background dancers for Usher right now. No and so, You know, do you remember DK? He's one of Tetris' student, students, and he... He taught um, at center at uh, center stage before me. I don't. Before, sorry, before think you, so. before you. I don't and I took so. classes from him. He's now dancing for Usher, and one of the and some one of the other girls is now dancing for Usher. That's like wild. That yeah, like that is like that is like like that is what I want to do. Like if I could pick one thing, like to dance for an artist, <laughs> I just love it so much. Bro. Like the energy that like from the crowd and like just the way it is, is just perfect. That's incredible. Oh yeah. What kind of opportunities have you had so far in because you've done more than just competition. You've done more than just a little, and I'm gonna, a I'm little. gonna bleed into Revel a little bit here for in a, in a minute. Um but outside of you know just taking classes all day, every day for the rest of for your entire life. 
and outside of conventions and, and competitions, what other types of things have you done that have gotten you closer to these opportunities or the possibility of doing these bigger gigs? Um, so one of the, f- the very first stories. paid, yeah, the very first paid story that I did was um, with a smaller artist um, named Frankie Zulfarino, and cool guy. Um, he's a New Yorker as well. I think he's in, he actually just came back to Florida. I should hit him up. <laughs> anyway, nice. he, we, we, he, uh, was talking to Sean, my teacher about, um, he just needed a dancer and I kind of like fit the profile, um, as cause he's like, I don't know if he's Italian, but his, the person he casted or recruited or whatever you want to call it, it was just two of us. We kind of all looked the same. So I kind of just fit the profile and I was able to dance. So he just kind of like said like, yeah, let's do it. It's like 150 bucks. We go to Boca Raton and, um, we do a small show for, um, like a country club. So like these rich, nice. rich, That's rich awesome. people. Um, they're like a bunch of like just older ladies just like getting lit and they were like Yo. he was like doing his pop star thing full pop star mode we, we, we wore like tux um, sparkly tux jackets like it was just full out I like remember this. yeah there was only three of us and we were just killing it on the stage we did some choreo it was it was it was jank but it was cool at the same time because it was technically <laughs> professional artists you know came and like sang and we and you know we danced in the background so like honestly and that was one of the funnest things i've done to date so that's awesome oh uh, yeah it was so fun and then one of the bigger ones that i did um most recently and i honestly haven't done a lot of professional stuff is one of the ones that limbert actually casted me for he mm-hmm. it was like an expo show thing that's during covid was kind of pre-recorded so basically yep. we, we did like a couple different performances we did like the dra- like a chinese dragon performance we had a little sticks and we did like a whole dragon yeah, you set. learned a lot you came back from that and you so were like bro much. i literally i know so much more <laughs> you literally like, we did that and we did a latin piece and we did crazy acrobatics it was still walkers and it was just a huge show that we had to do we did flag flag work whatever you want to call it color guard is that what uh, it's called? The color, um, we flew flags, basically. We just like one. did flag choreography, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it was just it was just fun. Like we we spent like a full week together. We did rehearsals, and then we did like show dress rehearsals. It was so fun. Dude. And I was like, that was one of the other moments of where I was like, this is what I want to do. Like if I could just literally just do this every day, like this is the dream, bro. Like bro. being in rehearsals with cool people, being on stage for a show. There was full cameras, like cranes that were probably like. 20 feet long with huge cameras on them full like full tv mode and the hard rock hard rock um theater on oh my god city walk so it was like it was like it was like a big deal and so that was one of the first things that not one of the first i'm maybe the first big one and only today technically so so far so far but Um, hopefully more with that but then obviously rebel Um, yep. Just being an assistant. So tell me more about the convention life because you traveled around a lot. You I did a lot of Revel uh, conventions. What other conventions had you done? Like I know you've done Ash, you've done um, Heat, and but which ones had you done prior to those two? Because those two are fairly recent, right? So so I never did what I do now as an assistant, um, being an assistant for Revel. Attending, just attending. like attending, just like convention life. Uh, I did a bunch, man. I did. You know, we did the competition, showbiz, showstoppers, freaking everything. What was that one you did in Pen- uh, Pennsylvania? That was a con- summer camp. That was a summer Conserv- camp. Yeah, summer camp at Point Park University. At Point Park. Point Park University. Yep. Point was Park it? University is when I did a dance camp. Not a dance camp. Summer intensive for four weeks, six weeks. Yeah, you were gone for a minute. Long time. Yeah. Um, honestly, that was one of the other things. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Literally, I would just, um, you know, wake up super early. Be- I mean, we were at- in ballet class, so I think 8 a.m. Damn. Yeah. Oh so my God. every time you would walk in, you were like, <laughs> hashtag cut to this camera. I mean, just 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 zonked, man. <laughs> Done. What's up, B Cam? Um, <laughs> <laughs> just completely, B-cam. just completely zonked. Um, but it was fun because you would come back and because like that was one of the no, one of the other crazy experiences is when I went to New Mexico when I was 15. So I went. So I got invited when I when I started taking it really seriously. I got invited to New Mexico to do a dance summer intensive called modus and that was like the first summer intensive because i spent i think that was two weeks 
I think something like that. And like for 15, for me, you know, take how to take care of myself completely. Like that's a yep. big deal. That was <laughs> wild. That was rough. I, I there was a couple times where I cried because it was it was tough. There, there was there was a time difference, super long flight, elevation was another big one because when we live in Florida, we're sea level all the time. And when you go over there, it's like thousands or hundreds, whatever it is, above sea level. So right. like the barometric pressure and yep. all that just gets messed up and then on top of having to buy my own food make my own meals and dance on top of that it was rough <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally there were nights where i was crying myself to sleep I, <laughs> like genuinely there. like not like making fun of it like i was genuinely crying until i went to sleep like yeah. sadness <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I've Epic been there. Sadness. We've been there. Epic sadness. Oh man, but, that, you know, those, those days aren't over. No, <laughs> those days. Nah. I mean, I can handle myself better now because I can yeah, take of care of myself. Of course, uh, but it's different. But then <laughs> round two, I was nervous to go to Point Park because of Modus, how bad it was. It wasn't. It was bad. No, it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> I had. It was a rough experience because dance was a lot harder than I was what I was used to, and I had to live on my own. And it was freaking New Mexico. It was so random. Right, but. It gave me like a bad taste in my mouth for like summer summer intensives out of state, gotcha. m- multiple weeks. But after Point Park, I'm like, oh yeah, summer intensives. Oh, man, <laughs> but it was in Pittsburgh, so Pittsburgh is a really cool spot. That's awesome. So I highly recommend you need to, you need to go to Pittsburgh. I want to go to Pittsburgh. It's a very cool I spot. Go to I don't know. So I I don't maybe it's because it was home for four weeks, and I was able to go back pretty recently and do a couple like touristy things but it was just like it was a cool place that i really enjoyed like a very mellow new york city vibe things like that so yeah and i've done a couple of those i did one i did a one week intensive in new york city as well um that one was cool because i got to work with a really cool choreographer jennifer archibald she um did a whole intensive for you know a week and we did rehearsals and classes all day and a concert video shoot and all kinds of things in new york city so it was a very cool place to be um it was during a heat wave fun fact nice terrible heat wave and there was no ac in the airbnb so yeah oh for f- about three days straight we were just sweating bullets all day it was terrible yeah, um, no, worse. Yeah. It was just hot. <laughs> we like, worse. <laughs> <laughs> it was one AC unit, and the rest of the and the rest of the the, the Airbnb was just sauna. Oh god, terrible. No, probably one hundred and thirteen degrees everywhere. Ew. Just hot, hot. Yeah. Oh my god. Not crazy. It was absolutely crazy. Oh my god. But I mean, on top of that, going to conventions in between, like Nuvo and just random stuff. I did yeah. conventions a lot. That's wild. Yeah. Let's talk about Revel because Revel is one of the few opportunities that you actually got to assist, help with the convention, get some of the behind-the-scenes action of what something like that is like. Um, how did you get the opportunity to actually work with Revel and be one of their um, pro revelers that would help be on stage, help uh, organize the events, be or help help them run smoothly, stuff like that? How, how, did, that, how did that come around? So uh, it was kind of ironic. I, I mean, I got pretty – I mean, it all worked out how it sh- – how how it was supposed to, but I got pretty lucky as far as COVID goes because what I had won the pro reveler. So like as a as a revel attendee, you can audition to be a pro reveler. I did that pretty spontaneously actually. Um, we had decided when we were at revel to do the audition. Like we didn't really yeah we didn't know that I was gonna do that prior, and I almost didn't even go to revel. So it's kind no of way. yeah. So I almost didn't even go to revel, but we decided last minute to go to revel. We decided last minute to do the pro revel audition, and I ended up just getting it, which was super super cool. Um. So after that, once that we went to the one city that was the Orlando, I had the opportunity. So it's a required like three cities to go to as a pro reveler. And so as people who are not financially fortunate, as some people are, that's struggle. You know, it's hard hard to leave home for four days, fly out, drive, buy hotels, food, stuff like that. It's rough. So we went to one city. It was Atlanta, Georgia as a pro reveler for... Um, the year after I won it, and then COVID hit, and we had planned. Yep. Yeah, we had planned to go to one of the South Carolina, um, or North Carolina, whatever. I, I don't ever remember the, between the two. Okay. <laughs> so, neither. but we didn't have to, and so I just did like five rev virtuals, basically with the rev virtual things, and like that is what was allowed me to, um, 
go for the Pro Revolver of the Year title. And so once COVID, not lifted, we wore masks, obviously, at that time still. It once it was kind of lifted, we were able to do nationals. And at nationals is when I got the audition for the Pro Revolver of the Year. L- long story short, that's when I won it. And then I was able to go on last year and do like eight eight cities. I went all that's over the insane. place. <laughs> I went all over the place. Doing more now, ten, ten cities with heat. Oh, my God. Every single one. Ten cities with heat. Yeah. So then after winning Pro D, Pro Reveler of the Year, with the Revel Dance Convention, then you started getting attention from these other conventions like Heat. Um, yeah. To then, you're, you're now as- assisting and actually working mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. Heat now, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And you're going to be traveling with them? Yep. That's awesome. Yep. Um, th- it wasn't like they picked me off on Instagram because I was working for Revel. It was just, I attended Heat just like as a, as a student, just but to like try it out. But they approached you there. Yeah, we had went up and talked to the owner there, and they were like, hey, if you want to, like, um, you know, be an assistant, feel free to come out. And so I did, and the story with that was that later in that season, um, we were like, we really want to try and and um, do this and try to be an assistant for them. So uh, Sean took me out, and he was like, I'll take a vacation, and you can, like, just go work. <laughs> so we went to Wisconsin. Nice. Uh, shout out Lake Geneva, <laughs> Wisconsin. <laughs> You with your shout out. I don't know. Yeah, it's just funny. <laughs> just shout, out Geneva. shout out. Hashtag. I, said, I don't know why I say that. It's just funny. Uh, <laughs> basically, <laughs> that week, it was um pretty tough. I'm not going to lie. It was a new new people. I didn't know anybody um, compared to like Revel. And well, yeah, I knew everyone. Know everybody at Revel. Yeah, I know everybody I at showed Revel. up and I was like. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I felt with Heat, you know. I just showed up. I was like, I know, dude, who these people are. And, but by the end of the weekend, I was like, all right, like, this is cool. And then they invited me. Literally the week after, they were like, hey, can you come to Dallas? I'm like, yeah, sure, I guess. <laughs> uh, clear my schedule. <laughs> so let's do it. And then <laughs> yes, um, after that, they invited me to where they invited me? Uh, uh, L.A., Anaheim. Anaheim. That one? Yeah is the one that I went to with them, and I was able to do the photo shoot there. And then, nice. yeah, just a couple of weeks ago, labeled me pro assistant. And I'll be helping with media content as well. So nice. that'll be fun. That's really solid. So long, long story. In the short term, in the short term, what are some steps that you're going to take to try to are, – are you – obviously, because you, you sent out your resume and you're trying to actually go for it, you're trying to continue with the dance stuff and not just purely focus oh, yeah. on the on the on the video and photo and oh, yeah. media stuff. In the short term, what are some steps that you see yourself taking to outside of the like agency? Or are you just gonna like go full fullness of the agency if they take you in? Like what are no, some steps I'm, you're gonna take to try to get that off the ground? Yeah, you know? I'm gonna continue. So basically the best thing that I've learned and like one of the coolest things that I've adapted with assisting and traveling with companies is that like just connections and like meeting the people who are teaching there and like being in the industry is like just game changing like just to know these people like i can go to like california and like have people that i know you know like that's a cool that's that's a cool feeling to have and so you know this next year just taking it to like just really connect with a lot of the educators and and uh, teachers to be able to like um just create connections and relationships with them so i can um, possibly continue that into like more jobs and things like that. Probably that's good. So networking, that's yeah. your answer. Dude, networking that's is game changing, bro. bro. Like honestly, screw social media. Too, the word of mouth, because like once it's so different. When somebody recommends you, clip this. When somebody recommends you over like them seeing you like on Instagram or something, it's so much more uh, valuable to the person who's receiving it every time. So if I come to you and I'm telling you that like I have a friend who's like kills videos and like I want like I want him to work with you or like you should hire him, right? Like that's so much more valuable than you just finding some random person just to like do video or something like that. Like right. so much more valuable. So as far as like if if the if the educators who are in the industry hiring people for jobs know my name, that is so much more valuable than me like I don't even know. <laughs> I, then, I don't even have an example. You're having a social media presence. Yeah, so or yeah, you, yeah, yeah, social media I presence. I think the, the key difference there is that rather than taking rather than finding somebody who's really, really good at dance, let's let's use that as an example, dance on, on Instagram and yeah. saying, I want them to come out and audition for my piece. Instead, it is my friend, trustworthy confidant, yeah. whatever, has now recommended this person they really should audition. Yep. And come out like there's that yep. difference between being recommended versus being found and yep. discovered discovered 
being found or discovered, you still have to prove yourself. Yeah, and that's one of the other things too. I haven't I haven't discovered this, but what I've been told is that like a lot of people will ask you to come to a, an audition just to see you show up. You like you like obviously you have to be good in the audition. That doesn't matter. Well, yeah, but yeah. they have already decided they wanted you if you just show up because they know who you are. Right. All you have to do is show up and just do that's your best. A, that's the thing in the industry. Once you get it's a little beautiful. bit of a reputation, like it's the same exact thing in the in the Broadway world as well. Like mm -hmm. a lot of times, stuff will be like, "Yeah, we definitely just want this person for the role." Yeah. Now, granted, because you have to do good in the audition, like you said, there is always the possibility of somebody coming in mm -hmm. and being like, "Yep." Yeah. So that comes into the complacency aspect. But you have a way better chance when somebody knows who you are. Better chance, but that comes into like you always still do your best. You mm -hmm. know, try your absolute freaking hardest. Um, to make sure that everything is, you know, going smoothly and to make sure that you get as many roles as possible. Yeah, 100%. Keep the best reputation. Well, I just spilled my life out on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, that was fantastic. So to bring all of this kind of to a close, we've covered the video, we've covered the photo, we've covered the business aspect of everything, and then we went into dance, that lifestyle, and where you're kind of going from there. Now, to kind of bring a full circle and wrap a little bit of value into that, not only talking about stories, but also to give somebody who's watching this a little bit of value from, let's let's attack them t as two separate entities and then kind of go at it all as one big life thing. On the video aspect. <laughs> <laughs> Shortest answer, uh, we'll, 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 de we'll dive, but Literally, work ethic. Yeah, so what is something that, on the video side of things, we're in the media industry business-wise, what is something that you would tell somebody who is just starting getting their career off the ground, getting their skills off the ground, trying to attack a hobby? That's You, you called me terrifying earlier for doing that? Anyway, <laughs> anyway so <laughs> I just won't pay attention to you. No, no, no. Um, something who's, someone who's just trying, whether it's media or anything else, but we'll use media as a direct example, what would you tell somebody who is just getting started in their niche or industry with their skills or hobbies so whatever you're doing it doesn't matter it, on the job training is so so amazing um so whatever genre of work whether it's a nine to five job like whatever you're doing as long as you're doing it well and you have experience and you have a little bit of credibility in it um that's super valid and super key super important um because uh, as long as you're good good at what you do or you try your best at what you do, um, there's no way that at some point it won't get to where you want it. Sure. So you're saying just put maximum effort. Maximum okay. effort, maximum time, a bunch of um, time and energy. And, and a lot of times also, like, it's so cliche, but it's so important. Like, doing something that you actually enjoy. Like, I don't, <clears throat> I don't make stupid amount of money. And it doesn't bother me, though. Like it, right. it, it, it ha like to this day, like, of course, like I want to make a bunch of money, but like, I'll get there. And like time too, like being like conscientious of like pay and having patience. Like it takes time. Like things are not just going to happen. Like those stories are rare and, and far and few, like they're, yeah. they don't come by very often. And so like having patience like is key. And like I was saying, like, I don't, I don't mind that I'm making a stupid amount of money. Like it doesn't bother me because I like what I do mm -hmm. and I have freedom. Yep. You know, and I have time. I'm young. So, like, yep. I don't have to worry about, you know, feeding a family. I don't have to worry about yeah. my next paycheck. I don't have to, yep. you know, I don't have to worry about those things because I am still young and I still have time. And so it doesn't bother me. And I'm already ahead of probably 85% of entrepreneurs. Um, and kids. And in kids. It, yeah, in general. We are. Like, it's literally just the fact of, like, starting. Like, literally, I'm sure you've heard it all the time. Like, the fact that we just started, like, where we are and, like, with what we had is, like, where, like, we flourish. Like, because, like, we um, started so early. We have so much time. And, like, people have literally told me, they're like, you are, so, like, the f where you're going to be, like, when I'm your age, like, 35. Like, it's just crazy to think about it, because if we started yeah. something like this now like what we have now like the fact Bro. that w what we can achieve in like another 10 years is just ridiculous and so like it's stupid. starting like today yeah. starting now absolutely and then some more literal steps like it's it's okay. those are those are okay. concepts that you absolutely have to grasp in order to be able to do anything successfully mm -hmm. and then along the lines of some more literal steps for somebody that's actually legitimately trying to make a business out of a skill or hobby using video as a direct example so following after people's footsteps and doing it better that's one of what's a really good tactic 
Um, it's kind of what we did with Daniel Schiffer. Literally. We f- so he's famous. He's got his he's got his money. Like he doesn't care about us. But what we did is we took some of the ideas that he had and made them better. And so if you if there's something that you've seen or somebody, go work for them. Go work under them. Learn all the things that you need to learn. And then do it on your own and try to make it better. Even if you can't make it better, like it's not a big deal. Just learn the skill of what you want from somebody who's already doing it. That's so important. Because as long if you can learn like from somebody who's actually doing it, whether they're in the industry or like whatever, like that's so important. Yeah. And it's so valuable. That's good. So following footsteps, taking notes, and then just doing it. Yeah. Literally. Hell yeah. <laughs> just do it. Like just do like it. Like literally. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> no, and then let's go to dance really quick. We can both both do the literal and, meta- and, 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 and more mental um, steps for an up-and-coming performing artist, for an up-and-coming dancer, for an up-and-coming person that up will be doing things I'm on a stage in front of a camera. What, Evan? I'm still up-and-coming. You're still up-and-coming? Still up-and-coming. So this further, is a tip for further, all of us. We are in this together. You're further along than the six-year-old Evan or True. eight-year-old Evan that True. started dancing. True. So let's take an eight-year-old or maybe even somebody that started – more like when I did, but mm-hmm. I'm still a newbie. Mm-hmm. I'm at your ten year old level. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so really, like but not in, literally, in, in but sense. like in a sense, like chronologically speaking. Right, 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 right. Somebody right. like me, or maybe a little bit younger than me, who is starting from ground zero, trying to do their best, getting into everything they can. Maybe they've gotten some good opportunities or really good. What would you tell those people moving forward for their career, for their happiness, for for everything moving forward? I mean, work ethic and and consistency and just being as like a performer in whatever training, whether it's in the studio, um, whether it's singing, studio singing or 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 dance studio, like you need to you need to be there. You need to train like you can't just go out like as like a amateur and like expect to like sure. have something happen. You have to have fundamentals because like pe- when people are like looking at you, like they are going to know if you're trained or not. Like people who like, and there's nothing wrong with this. Like people who grew up like freestyling and stuff like that and come and like try to like do like technical things or like things like they, they won't know. They just won't know how to do things properly if they came up just like freestyling or like sure. dancing on the street or something. Like that. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. That is so dope. And there's sometimes where I'm like, you know, I kind of wish that like, I, like, I did like I added that like I was like a, a like a street dancer right. on top of being in the studio because to have both like it's just so cool. Right. And so like as far as that goes, like you need to work. Like it just it just it just takes work and um going out and like showing yourself and showing who you are and like never being afraid to do your best. That was one of the things like when I was a kid, I have no idea why. <laughs> I never really tell people this, but like when I was a kid, like in this in my first studio, like I was afraid to do my best. Like it's really weird. But like literally just like not being afraid of like being all out, being yourself, like do as much as you can and like do what it takes to like get the job, do what it takes to nail the audition, do what it takes to like just kill the class and get called out. Like literally whatever it is. Like literally you need to be like full out all the time. You need to do, you need to do your best all the time. Yeah. Well, it's funny that you bring up the whole being scared to do your best because it's 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 something that I've noticed even in the very very short time that I've been in studios that I've been at conventions Weird. that I've been at Weird. things. People are afraid to be called out for doing well, even like being called out at all period for critique for for doing well. Um, people not wanting to stand out, even though standing out is how you succeed in this yeah, industry because you stand out among other people. That's what makes you a good performer. Mm-hmm. And people are still somehow afraid to sit there and throw their arm up all the way because they might get noticed or something yeah. like that as far as like in any... If you're going to be so in, in any sort of performing arts, like... Yeah, like you know, get rid of it now if as much as you can. I obviously know there's mental blocks and there's things, anxiety and like things like that. Like that could like happen to you, like being in front of a crowd. It's it's important to get over it as soon as you can. Like and I know that sounds harsh. I don't mean it in that harsh way. No, like no, get no. over it. But moving past it and moving forward and getting better at it and starting as soon as possible, not being afraid to do your best or be in front of people or like get called out, raising your hand, like you said, like just raise your hand. <laughs> like it's not that big a deal. No. <laughs> N- nothing nothing bad is gonna happen from you doing your best. Only good will happen and progression. It's That's not, it. It's it's not even caring. Like just don't. It doesn't matter what other people think. In the moment, you sit there and it's you. You have that sense of that 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 welling embarrassment come up, and then you look around and you realize that nobody else gives a shit, and they all feel exactly the same as you do. 
Yeah. For the most part, they're all sitting there and worrying about themselves. They, even if they aren't as scared as you, they understand it. And for you, just look around after after something happens. Do something stupid. Look around and see for how long after the first second and a half that it happens, people care. Yeah. And if they care for it for longer than five seconds, <laughs> that's their own f- problems. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's 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 still only five seconds. Yeah. Then you're like, then you move on. It doesn't then you last go forever. And do better things. It doesn't and that's last how forever. you grow, and that's how you learn. Yeah. You never learn within your comfort zone, and that's one thing that I yeah. love about performing arts is that yeah. we're always pushing ourselves out of our comfort zones. Yeah. Because that's how we get jobs. Done. Yeah, you need to. If, I mean, if <laughs> that's you how we get employed. <laughs> if you ask anybody in any industry, like when it comes, like for instance, fitness. If you are only working out when it like and it doesn't hurt, you're not progressing. And yep. so and so like they say like um beauty is pain and like things like that, but like it's truth. Like pain and not suffering, but pain and and and, well, and suffering, whatever. <laughs> so I'll say it. Pain and suffering like it leads to progression most times obviously within within reason like you need to push yourself and you need to be uncomfortable and that's the best way like you can say it it's just like as long as you're uncomfortable that means you're growing yeah that's wild dude and, and that's it that's drop, the mic. <laughs> drop, drop, drop the mic drop drop the mic uh good thing we're on the couch you just yep. peaked all the levels <laughs> everybody listening you just well hate if you guys are tuning in now, thanks for listening. Dude, thank, <laughs> thank you, guys you for so listening. Much for and listening and if you listened this. all the way until the end, we'll leave a secret. You got to leave a secret for the people who have listened all the way to the end. So if comment, is there gonna be comments um, on whatever if platform? If you guys, if you guys comment, um, what's the word? Dorito. Dorito. Under the we know you watched the whole thing. Under the post on my Instagram mm. that is of a yellow Corvette and a friend of mine in front of it. Um, or just the he's, most he's recent post, because we don't know how long this is going to be. I Listen, let's make this an Easter hunt. Easter okay, hunt. you can Easter hunt it, or even if you... Anywhere. Dorito, until, if we see Dorito, until, until, anywhere. Until the end of 2022, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you comment Dorito, and this is only applicable once, I will Venmo you 25 cents. That's that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Evan, thank you so much for coming on, bro. This is so man. good. This, this is actually good. I just spilled fun. my guts <laughs> out to these cameras. I hope <laughs> you enjoyed about, listening to me. Talking about dance, talking about talking about video, talking about industry, talking about having some fun in life. This is yeah. really good. Well, we have we barely even talked about life just in general. I know. Like, we could probably this, sit here for another two hours. Um, honestly. We're not going to. We're not going to. <laughs> we're gonna cut it. We're gonna have another we'll have another show. I don't I don't want to do real. that today, but we'll we'll have another section and we'll we'll have another follow up as well in maybe a year or two, mm-hmm. like doing another podcast yep. and be like So this is where we are now. It's like where Truth. it was, how it started. I do that in my journal. I, I write down my bank statements in my journal. No way. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I can look back and see where financial I was at. Goals. Financial, financial goals. Financial goals. Yeah. I don't even have I don't I don't set goals. When I I can't stop talking all <laughs> when I when I write in my journal, I write how much money I have currently, and and I and I write and I say and I say when I'm rich, I can look back at these. When I'm yep. fortunate, when I when I've made when it. I'm fortunate, he when says. I've, when I've been fortunate. When I've been fortunate. All right, all right, I'm done. I'm done. All right, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, thank you guys. guys so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy, please consider sharing this with a friend who Should also needs it. to waste their life away watching do us it. on a couch. Bang it out. This is how you in, no. This is how you outro. Go ahead. Go say your outro. Um. Okay. Um. If you please consider sharing it with a friend. Consider sharing it on any social media platforms and telling the world about what exactly it is that we do. Uh. And we're just gonna see you guys later. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that episode of Not Another Podcast. Just like I said in the beginning, I would greatly appreciate it if you would go write us a review, follow the podcast so you never miss another episode, and share this with one friend who might find value in what I or a guest said during the show. Rob Dial always says, make it your mission to make somebody else's day better. And that quote ever since I started listening to his podcast has really changed my thinking as far as how I go about my daily life. So with that being said, I'm going to leave you the way that Rob Dial leaves you every single episode. Make it your mission to make somebody else's day better, and I hope that you guys have an amazing day.